one. And it is about that time. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a phenomenal show. You are tuning in to Ready Set Real Estate Live. Oh my goodness, I am so pumped. I am so pumped. Make sure you invite someone, tag someone, share, post, tune in, subscribe to Ready Set Real Estate. We are available on radio podcasts everywhere iTunes, Google Play, Anchor FM, Spotify, whatever fancy technology gadget that you have, we are there. I am so stoked and excited. You know, we've been having some amazing and powerful guests every week. And today I bring to you Clint J. Marmon, my finance specialist in L.A., He's a finance specialist and member of NIREP, and we're going to learn so much about Clint, what's coming, what's happening, what's new. Clint, welcome to the show. Man, that was a, that was a great intro. <laughs> you had me like glad. here, like all the way going up, going up. I was like, wow, that's, that's deep. I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it. And I'm, this is me wanting to make sure I maintain my, I just had a, uh, uh, you did three miles or two day, uh, day before yesterday. I got in five yeah. miles today. I did yeah, five I'm, miles this morning. Okay, I'm doing six tonight. Okay. And this is wonderful that we're opening up like this because mind, body, spirit is very important when we're talking about getting the money right. right. Self has to be yeah. right to receive that money. Absolutely. You're looking great, by the way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love and dressing up for business. I, 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 I mean, you know what? I absolutely love it. Dress for success. Yeah. Dress yeah. for success. Once I, understood that, once I understood how fun it was to dress up, it, now it's like I, 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 I'd rather dress up for business than for like regular clothing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you've got some, you've got, you know, shout out to Mariette. We want to shout out to Mariette right yeah, here. She's like huge Clint J. Harmon fan. Really appreciate her for being on and supporting. That is awesome. I love when people are stoked and supporting because, you know, without the support, I mean, it becomes all for naught. And, and we've got to tap into our greater purpose. Clint, tell us a little bit about where you're from, um, because hey, we never assume yeah. that people know who we are. And we're expanding to a new new fan base, listening base. You know, we're streaming on uh, car dashboards everywhere. We've got to reach about 4 million. So yeah. this is what's exciting about what we're doing and leveraging technology to get the word out there. So, Clint, where are you from? <laughs> Born and raised in L.A. Um, I grew up in Hollywood off of Santa Monica and Western. Uh, from there, I, I, I lived in... a downtown, downtown LA. From there, we moved, you know, in LA, everybody's moving, right? When yeah. you live in so back in the 80s, you know, so went from there, then to 7th and Alvarado, um, then to Crenshaw, then to the Valley. So, I mean, I'm straight LA though. I did live though, I did live for like about a month out in Kentucky. Wow. Louisville. 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 So, and yeah. you didn't say Louisville, so you are really from there. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my mind, though. I lost my mind. It was just, you know what? I love the South. I love it. But it was just so slow. I was just like, I was like slowly decaying. And oh, no. Yeah. But oh, it was no. a great experience. I got to saw the whole, the whole nation. I mean, you know, just from a Greyhound standpoint. And, um, but yeah, no, born and raised in L.A., my mom is Salvadorian. My dad's white. Um, and I just love life. I'm glad you say that. And see, that resonates with me because you're host as well. And this is what was amazing. We should share where we met, actually. So people kind of know, like, it's, it's networking is so important. And Clint and I resonate with personal development, expanding our networks and resources. And this made sense. This merger made sense. And we were at a networking mixer for attorneys in downtown, right? Yeah, so yeah. shout out to, to, to LA, downtown, all the fanciness. And so my finance specialist in LA meets my financial, LA. My financial. my financial specialist in LA meets LA super agent. That's right. That's or right. la super agent. La super agent. 
Plus super agent, because I get people hey, to say that too. Depending hey, on know. who. Hey, I don't know. Lisa, Lisa is like my Latinasta. Yeah. <laughs> depending, I, 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 I shared with Clint, depending on the are the beholder, right? So some right. people say Lisa Puerto, LA super agent. Others say Lisa Puerto, la super agente, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited. I, I'm this. We were pumping. We were pumped about this. So hey, quickly, tell us a little. Quick, I just want to thank Mar Mariette. Thank you for tuning in. Love you. Big kiss. Thanks for, for your support. She's, Absolutely. She's, we're going to have to have her on soon. I, I know what I'm telling you. That's for sure. Yeah. And it's all good. And this is this is what it's about. This is what it's about is expanding the reach, the features. And for those of you who are new to the show, the show Ready Set Real Estate supports Real Estate 100 Youth Foundation, which is our real estate nonprofit that introduces real estate literacy to youth and young adults across the country. So I am founder and CEO, and the mission is to expand Amazing. our reach with the young youth and introduce them to real estate careers, empowerment, and we've been doing amazing. We, we started off as a book and that book is translated into three different languages, English, Spanish, and French. So, you know, for those who are my Latino family and readers, Bienes Raices Cien, go ahead and check that out. And this is what the show's about so that they can identify the individuals in the industry. So Clint, Q, tell us about being in the industry. <laughs> Man, you know what? Um, so, I, I, I initially, I initially started as a DJ, right? I, I was a DJ. I mean, I was. I oh, initially, I started as a, as a runner for my mom, selling her tamales. Ah. Right? So my first boss was actually my mom, right? Okay. Yeah, and so, um, so the entrepreneurial spirit, it's, it's always been in me. Um, my mom cleaned houses for thirty something years. Um, you know, so kind of jumping into this, you know, I, the, the way I landed in finance was I was a DJ uh, for about 10 years, right? A very successful one. I would say I consider, I consider myself probably the top five DJ in LA at that time. Okay. Now I got to ask what genre bring it. Okay. Hip hop, <laughs> dance hall. Um, we did, we did do some EDM, some, some, some house, but it was very light, but definitely R and B hip hop and dance hall. I love dance hall. Reggae. I, that was my favorite to spin. Okay, see, see, okay, that that's why that this, this that's why this is uh, works right because I'm Belizean, so right. <laughs> reggae dance hall, soca punta. Hey, my best friend's Belizean too. He's actually a district attorney in downtown, Killian Jones. I wouldn't have never been able. The way I learned reggae was through him and through his whole family, the Jones wow. family, the Garbett family, and it, it just changed my life. You know, reggae. Dance hall is just absolutely amazing. Okay. Yeah, Castro, good friend of mine. Shout out. <laughs> I love I love this. I love that you guys are all like, you brought some people in before we went on. You're like, look, we're about to go on live. <laughs> oh, we're on the show. It's all Great. about love. So, so, so music, all right, got a passion for music. And yeah. 10 years in, how do we get into the, the money world? So what happened was at that time, um, I was dating my wife, my current wife still, um, and she, you know, she she was pregnant, right? And when she when she became pregnant, I said, okay, this is a crossroad, right? Because the entertainment industry, and I know somebody say it's all it's all willpower, man. It's all it, uh, look, it's tough for men. I don't know how tough it is for women, and I know it's tough from a different angle because I knew a lot of girls that were doing things to try to go up the ranks, right? But right. for men, it, it was a little bit, it's a little bit different because you get a little bit of fame, a little bit of recognition, and thank you, Mariette. And what happens is that, you know, there's a lot of temptation. And my thing was just like, okay, if, if I don't step out of the music industry right now, right, it, it's, it, I like women, right? I mean, a straight man likes Well, women. that's honest. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm being super honest. You know, I, I mean, I like women, black, white, Latinas. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? So right. You, if you're traveling, I mean, I, I just figured, I, okay, I'm not, it's going to be so difficult to raise a family, being a mm. DJ on the road. I mean, it's tough. And I didn't want my son to have a stepdad. 
Right. So, uh, so I, you know, good woman and everything. And so uh, we married and, and I decided to switch businesses. Uh, 21st Century Insurance gave me an opportunity uh, mm. to come on board and get licensed as a personalized insurance agent. So okay. that's where I, in 2004, right? Uh -huh. And so when I got licensed, they trained that 21st Century was, I mean, such an amazing company before the buyout, the AIG buyout, before farmers took over. I mean, those takeovers really destroyed the essence of who 21st Century was, right? Mm. Yeah, it, it really, I mean, just an amazing company. And that's where I learned the importance of financial planning because they were teaching us how to really help our clients insure their properties, insure their cars, insure their risk. And that's when I was like, wow, this is a bigger picture than what it, what it really is. Absolutely. And so that's when I, I kind of just, you know, you know, started, you know, digging the brush and, you know, moving the brush and, and, and cutting the branches down. And because look, I'll, I'll be honest, it's a white dominated industry. Mm -hmm. It's, it, yeah. it, you know, financial, it's, it's, we're not going to lie about it. Right. It's, it's a, it's a white male dominated industry and no one's willing to help you, you know, to get into like, to become a financial advisor, to become, you know, to get into these ranks. I mean, it's, you literally have to fight your way in. And I think like over all these years, the more I started speaking to minorities that were in these ranks, they were like, Hey, you can do this. You can do that. Get this license, get that license. And, and that's where my mind just started opening up and, um, and that's when my, my love for BJ, right. When it was more about the business, it, the art was always passionate, but I, I love the business sense. Like what Jay-Z has done, what Puff Daddy has done, what, or Diddy, right. What, um, just like Lil John has done, just these, these mastermind brand geniuses, right. So I was always attracted by that. And I just said, wow, this is, this is really powerful. And you can bring this element of what the hip hop world or the music world's doing in the world of finance. Cause I have to know. say, I, I have to chime in because Dr. Glenn Toby is on and he chimed in. You're talking about hip hop and house. He is actually the founder and innovators of house. That's amazing. He is uh, a so hip hop much. house mogul producer. He was, he's been on a show in the past. So Glenn Toby, Dr. Toby's doing amazing things with the youth as well. DJ Shout out to the, the Book Bank Foundation. You, this was so synchronistic that you talked about merging music and money because he's, he chimed in and that's what he's about. And he's managed, you know, big names that we know today. And that was so funny. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, and it's so crazy. And look, this is, this is so crazy because once you start seeing the finance world, you start seeing who manages the minority's money, right? And, and again, this is, this is no disrespect to any culture, but who manages all of their money are, are accountants, a lot of white accountants and a lot of Jewish accountants, right? And because, yeah. I mean, you know, they run these organizations, they, they, they already, they're issuing the contracts, right? So, they're, you know, a lot of them, they're, they're consultants, they're, they're, they're their go-to people, or maybe, you know, their, their family members. But I just think that, um, that I, I found a passion. And once I went back to finance school, right, I went to business school and started really, you know, I went into finance, you know, my major in finance, it, it, it just, it opened up my, it just, it, it opened up a can of worms. <laughs> Not a, it's a, a good, a good can, a good can. It's a good can, yeah. yeah. A it's good like, can. It's, it's, I it's think that's really for the nice. world. Yes, for, for the for world. world. Yeah, and I think it's very powerful in terms. I, I mean, wow! I had no idea you were gonna go there, yo. You went in right now, Clint. Like, <laughs> I didn't expect you to be like, look, here's the facts of when we talk about money and who's managing and cultural and being bringing all those pointers. And this is what I like about doing the lives because I veggie back off of what my guests are saying. I'm in master student position. You are master teacher and we get to learn together. This is why I share with people, connect, build and share. We're, we're on the same level. We're on the same yeah. level. I'm learning, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and having a degree in psych and finance and merging that people and money, I figure no matter what I did in life, I'll have to deal with people and money. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? I, and I think that a lot of people, and unfortunately, 
a, a lot of minorities, they, they get into these majors in, in college because they want to hush up their parents, right? Oh, like I'm taking psych, I'm taking social, but like, they're not really, or they're not really taking, um, they're not really taking those majors because they want to understand the science, the neurological thinking of like the woman or the homosexual or the child molester or, you know, mm. the and like, they, they don't, mm. I don't think they really dive into that to understand why, right? To understand the why. It's just like, oh, well, my mom wants me to go to school. Mm. And I think mm. that's what Gary V says. Like, yeah, you know what? So if you're going to do that, then just not go to school. Don't do your parents a favor and not waste their money. Yeah. And this is one thing we touched on that before. So again, this brings us back to the importance of the work we're doing through the nonprofit. 80% of our students we know are not pursuing higher education. So we have uh, 80% that are saying, I don't want to do that. So what can they do? This is an industry that is $1.3 trillion annually. Annually, not in just in commissions, in the real estate professional, but all the other people that are integral to this industry, all the other players. And so this is what this show is about. We feature all the other players and it takes away the focus from the lender and the agent and buyer and seller because there's so many other people involved to make this happen. And this industry is what creates new money. Yeah, I mean, you know what? And, and, I, and I think this is, this is another factor, right? The, the new money generation the new the new money generation i don't they they don't want to do what their parents did right they don't they don't want to do what their parents did and they want to do something different they de they definitely want to do something different and i clearly uh-huh yeah <laughs> no clearly. i said clearly i just yeah. want to sit in front of the webcam and do this <laughs> this is what i want to do <laughs> no you know what? it's it's just you know i i i, I think I, and I really no, I, I don't even think I feel like where where minorities are at right now with with not wanting to go to school is a good problem, right? Because now because they don't want to go to school, there's an ability there's an ability to educate them and start guiding them in the right direction, right? So I always feel like that lev that level of of, of rebellion is it, it's, it's always a good thing because they're they're showing you their true colors. Because remember, a young young people are, are way better to, to, to connect with and understand what's going on with them than older people. Older people, they have more baggages, more bad habits. They have, um, and they just have a lot of junk in their life. Young people, if they don't want to talk to you, they're not gonna. They're, they don't want to talk to you, and they're showing you their true colors. So, I think by us teaching them and being examples and and opening them the conversation, like, hey, guess what? You know, it, yeah, these are male dominated industries or this or, or these are or white, white male dominated industries or maybe white ethnicity. Don't worry about that. Right. You come in and knock the door and you you work your ass off. I like it. And that's what we empower. That is the empowerment that we bring knowledge, your knowledge, talents, gifts to the world. Are we really hone in on that when we do the I am techniques and the personal development techniques. Clint, you're hitting on so many points. Like we, I, I, it's so funny cause I haven't even gone in with you on the work that I do, my mission, purpose, passion with the youth. So I'm, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Yeah, this I'm is so fun. happy. This is definitely yeah, good. It's resonating. And so share with us a little bit about some challenges as you're talking about youth. I mean, you're talking about culture, right? Um, proud Latino, right? And 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 I have to say that because you were like, shout out to Narep San Fernando. So <laughs> you hey, got the whole crew. <laughs> that's my family, man. I mean, seriously, like, okay. I'll be honest, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not rep. Like, like seriously, when. When I understood who not like who as an organization I rep was, I was like, ah, like you know, you're like, I'm just a bunch of realtors, just like, you know, always networking, right? I mean, again, that's many times the perception that we have that they drink, they party hard, you know, and you know, they, they make doctors, surgeon money, and they don't care about life, right? So that was my mm. perception because in two thousand and five, mm. I was surrounded around around that. And my perception of realtors was just really, really bad for a very long time. 
when Ooh. I came in, yeah, it was really bad for a long. I, I really, I mean, I, I'll be honest. You and the rest of the world, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. The perception you know they have of us is, uh -huh. yeah. No, and you know what? And there's a lot of good realtors doing good things out there. And and shout out to everybody out there that are, I know, Lisa Puerto, like her there too. <laughs> you know, Shameless just, plug. Man, you're doing big things. And I just think that there's, you know, with, with, with the platform that we have, the money that, that we're making, you, we have to influence, we have to change our communities. We have to, we have to, it's a disfavor if we, if, if we, if we didn't do that. And I think one thing that no rep has really done is, is just like trying to educate business owners, trying to educate families on how to, you know, get a good contract, um, you know, and, and educate the realtors like, Hey, be, you know, give back to the community, you know, like do right for them, you know, live a wow. good life. You know? So the not rep 10 principles are just amazing. So we just connect it automatically. Right. Very good. Very good. So that was a quick shout out and we'll come back to that because there's some very powerful and amazing things that are happening and coming soon that I'm happy to attend and, and be a part of that. That's what this merger is about. Um, expanding your network and your resources is always huge. And uh, for those youth that are part of our Real Estate 100 internship program, they're required to attend networking events because I show them the importance and value in networking. So we're going to come back to that. But I want to touch on some challenges that oh, challenge. you have yeah. experienced. Yeah. Let's talk about some uh, challenges. You know, it's interesting that you would think that, and I'm, I'm bringing out the race card because it's, it's a good card to bring out. I don't like pulling it out. I like bringing out the race card to empower our people, right? So that's what okay. I'm Okay. Yeah. So... I, you know, one thing that I did realize, um, you know, just being being around a lot of Wall Street financial advisors, just wealthy financial advisors, um, and, and and for the most part, you know, coming back, you know, they're they're all Caucasian, they're all white, you know, um, and it's not their fault. They just work very hard, right? You come into these circles, you come into these circles, you're seeing their work habits and stuff like that, and I and to me personally, I never. I, I never, I, I never tried to, you know, let like, well, how can I explain it? If, 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 if I did see discrimination, I never let, really let it affect me to the point that it drove me out. So I think challenges that I faced was, yeah, I, you know, you did experience some, 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 you know, some, some racism, some discrimination within these organizations. But Microaggressions. I, Microaggressions I, is what it's called. Mm-hmm but I feel like I have thicker skin than they do. Right. So, you know, my thing is yes. just like, Hey, you know what? My work ethic is going to outperform you, you know, and I'll buy you. A and you know, I wanted to add to that because most people that actually, when you see that are at the top level, top producer, top agent, top business, whatever the top is for them in that industry. Uh, it's interesting that, it's it comes down to moving past being able to work past that and yeah. you're not leaning so much on oh because it's this oh it's because of this but it's how do we then transcend my my resources my talents and gifts my dedication my commitment my work ethic like you said to the next level and everybody's talking about the level up the level up how do you do the level up and i think that's so golden that one, you 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 shared about re the the support that you have, the networking, and my broker shares this all the time with us about it's not necessarily who you know, but who knows you, right? And that's again, we get back to we heard it right. Your net worth equals your net work. <laughs> no, you know what? You touched on something really important. I recorded on this um, a couple days ago on my podcast where where I was talking about how I think that a lot of people value their homies, right? A lot of people value like their comadres, right? Their godmothers. Mm. And their godmothers or their, their compadres or those family members aren't doing crap for them. I guess I don't want to say mm. the S word because I know there's probably like kids, but yeah, they're, they're not- Be ready, PG, yeah. PG, please. PG, <laughs> PG. And- um, and so you don't, you, you see like, they don't do nothing for them, 
And what you said right now, which is uh, regarding networks, right? It's like, who knows you? They only know you. They only know you because of the value that you're bringing, mm. right? So what happens is this, right? I just feel like we're so focused on, oh, uh, hopefully my, you know, this person likes me, that person likes me. So you're, you're relying solely on the approval of other people. And I think that addiction to approval, which I had before for a long time, and it's a state of mind for you to break mm. out, right? You have to go from that to now saying, hey, you know what? If they're going to recognize me, they're going to recognize me for what? My work ethic. I'm doing good. I'm helping out the elderly. I'm helping out the orphans. Like, you know, like even your mom, you know, like, you know, your mom is like needs your help. Like, you know, you should be around, you know, like start home. Yeah. Start home. It doesn't have to be this grand global mission, right? Right. It just right, right at home. Like, is there family, friends in your intimate circles that you can just reach out and be like, here's a referral, right? right? Bring them on, on the team. I love that. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. And shout out to your shirt. It's, you know what? It's yes. it's fine. Look, I, I, look, I came, I came from neighborhoods where there was prostitutes. You know, I have, I even say have that. I say that you and I both, let's I, keep I it real. Let's keep family. it real. Right. right. Um, drug addicts. I had a brother that was on drugs for 15 years. You know, my mother had, um, you know, aside from my mom being a housekeeper, I'm also, you know, a food stamp and welfare baby. So, you know, we used mm -hmm. to look forward to the first and the 15th of the month, you know? Right. So, I mean, it was it, 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 like, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't change those, those days for, for, for anything. Agreed. I don't want, I, I, I don't want my community to stay at that mindset. Right. You know, I think it's, you have to fight your way out of that jungle because it's a jungle. Mm. And, and you're not given a compass. School Alicia Keys said concrete jungle. Yeah, the concrete jungle over there by Martin Luther King, you know. Um, but the sc schools are not giving you a compass. And then, you know, and if you have immigrant parents, you know, they only have a certain compass of, of, of their, their willingness and, and the sacrifice that they paid to come from whatever country here. But that's about it. And this is right. kind, of, kind of like in the desert trying to find your way to water and you have, you have to fight. Wow. Fight. Wow. Very real and transparent. I really thank you for that because this is the focal point is that we're dealing with real people, real, real estate, flips, flops, booms, and busts, raw and uncut. So thank you for that. And because again, it's easy to be like, yeah, upward mobility but if someone can identify and resonate with with what you've been through like if someone's going through on subsidy right and is getting cash aid and is going it's like okay so if you've never experienced that how how are you talking about upward mobility to me if you've never walked what you've never been in my shoes right so for those who are listening that have experienced that and you know, you open up the show and shout out to you being sharp. You said, now that I learned that dressing for success is fun, you'd like, I do this, I do this for fun. It right? is right. Yeah. I do it for fun. And what we what we wear, it really transforms our minds and vice versa. That shift your thinking, which is another show that I do on Tuesday, but also same here. My brand, I'm a walking brand, ready set real estate everywhere I go. Why shifting the mindset, shifting the mindset that it's a conversation starter with the people that I come in contact with. So I am ecstatic that you hit on that and really appreciate you for that. Yeah. So what's new? And I know some stuff already, but I want you to do it. <laughs> what's, what's, new? What's, yeah. what's new? What's you new know, with you? It's, you know, it's it's. The, you know, you, 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 it's interesting. Um, even from when we last like saw each other, yeah. Right? Even from when we last saw each other, um, so many things have changed. Really? I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, just right now, um, I'm adding four to five new advisors to my team. Wow. You know, and hopefully, um, you know, as well. You know, it, it just. It, it, that's the kind of like I need to keep that on, uh, under the house, but 
Okay, yeah, just process. all right. No, we don't give everything yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a 25 minute show. We're gonna get ready to wrap it up. Know, exactly. And people who want to learn more about you and connect, uh, we're plugging your social media and that way they can connect and build Perfect. and share with you. Yeah, so yeah. So, what's new? so the biggest thing is this, right? San Diego, Latitude, NARAP. Uh, that's one of the big the biggest things that are taking place over the, in, in the next three weeks. Uh, there's going to be, a, uh, or actually four weeks, right? Um, three to four weeks. It's one of the historic Latino, and it's when I say Latino, it's Latino driven because, but everybody's welcome, right? White, black, you know, Jewish, Indian, Polish, you know, Serbian. I mean, everybody's. <laughs> I could tell that I could tell that's your network because I wouldn't be able to come up with all those many people off the top of hey, my head. Shout out to all my Persian people too from Iran, you know, and our <laughs> Armenian family too. So right, yeah, uh, yeah. This is a, a big event. We have um, A Rod coming out. We have um, Robert Rodriguez, a film director. Uh, we have you know great chefs like Armando Tam. Um, that that's as well. He's part of our organization. I mean, it's just. It's a big event that's taking place, um, and it's kind of like the Million Man March, but mm. for the Latino businesses, though, in real estate, but all wow. businesses are welcome, yeah. Wow. And everyone, pretty much, if, if anyone who's, if you're new to me, one of the things that I introduced to the youth is that we're all connected to real estate. Yeah. We all are interconnected. Uh, albeit, if, if you say you run your own business, more than likely, it's on a commercial front, whether you lease or own it. And it, we're talking about uh, industrial, manufacturing, residential, agricultural, commercial. That's all real estate. Everything. It's all connected. And so, especially in Los Angeles, it's, it's a renter city that rents keep co going up and up and up. And, you know, and I think people have to get into the mindset and, and say, hey, I have to own something. We have to own something. Is you talking about that, actually, um, <clears throat> as I was listening to another podcaster, he was a, a uh, he did a segment with me on my real estate bites. So I do these impromptu real estate interviews. And uh, James Dunn of Explore L.A. Living was talking about rent control and it being Proposition 10 being on the ballot in November. So that's going to shift the whole arena in terms of owners own a property who properties that were originally exempt from rent control is now in the ballot to be considered to be pulled in to be subject to rent control. So a lot of things are happening and that's going to yeah. impact. Yeah, that's this is huge. A lot of things and a lot of momentum is happening in real estate, not just here, but nationally, because the work that I do from here to the East Coast to Canada, you see how everyone is being impacted and everyone is looking for solutions. And that's, that's why I am so happy for me to have stepped down and opened up this platform to, to now have the Clint J Marmons on the show, to have you <clears throat> talk about what you're doing, your passion, the outreach, the community, and just, we're going to have you back. So I'm really excited about that. Thank you so um, much. Absolutely. Any last comments, feedbacks you want to leave with our listening audience as we get ready to wrap up? I just want to say this, guys, and thank you guys for even listening to me. Just, you know, pour out, you know, my thoughts. Um, just keep fighting, guys. You know, I, you know I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm relentless. And I just want to transmit that to you guys that, you know, don't, don't pay attention to the naysayers. Mm. You know, oh, like, oh, like you're starting your business. Because everybody has something to say. If, if your vision, your dream is that big, right, just fight for it. Just, I mean, just, just go for it and fight for it. I appreciate you, Clint. Yeah. I'm, I'm fighting. Like, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm throwing the blows, coming in strong. I did What's six miles doing? a day. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making the time to come on and share with our audience and expanding our reach. We're doing amazing things. Yeah, and are. yeah, for you all who are new to the show, make sure you subscribe, radio yeah. podcast everywhere. And Clint, I shout you out, my financial specialist in yeah. LA. He is host of his show, 
as well. Also available on iTunes, Google Play, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Yo, we doing it. Get here. We're doing Get it. Here. We're doing it. September the 8th through the 11th. I'm sorry. I didn't tag the dates. September the 8th through the 11th. Um, I know you're going to post the links uh, for, the, for, for the event. Get information on the event. We have still the discounted prices for that event, almost by 50 to 65%. So uh, we have a few, a few tickets left. So if you really want to come out, you know, um, you know, there's a lot of people come out. You're coming out, right? I'm going. I'm out. there. See you. See you yeah. in SD. SD. Uh, so let me know. Uh, let Lisa know, and we'll get you. We'll facilitate those tickets to you guys. It's just going to be amazing. Food festival, film festival, everything. I mean, it's it's. Thank and thanks for letting us uh, over here. You know, get on the show. I appreciate that. Absolutely. You guys, I appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure to connect, build, and share on all social media at Ready, Set, Real Estate. Again, you can connect with me at LA Super Agent at the dot com. Tell I'll your see mom. You, next week. you better tell your see mom you about next the LA week. Super Agent. You know you're <laughs> on Ready, Set, Yes. Too. Tell <laughs> everyone. <laughs> He's like, tell, tell your abuela, tu tío, tu tía. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys all we'll right. see you next week already said real estate we're out <laughs>